guys, so today we are going to do another review video. We are going to be trying this for the first time together because I have never used it. I have passed by it a dozen times and thought, you know what, it's time. I'm gonna do a review video on this paint. It is the Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Finish Paint. Um, you can buy this at Home Depot. Uh, you can also get it online. I did find it on Amazon. So I'm kind of excited to try this together. It's always fun to check out new paints at the same time because I have no idea what to expect. So one of the first things I will tell you that of course catches my eye, but I know better because I've been doing this for a few years, is it says right there on the can, easy application, one coat coverage, and that's a huge promise. So let's see if it can live up to the promise that it writes directly on the can. That's always fun for me to tie and check that out because I, I honestly have yet to date find an actual one coat coverage paint. So huge promises. Let's check this out together and see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna tip the camera down so we can get on this. We're gonna start on a practice board and see how the first coat lays down. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and get started and put this paint on. Just a little fun fact for the day. I'm actually sitting down for the shoot of this video because I have this beautiful cast on my leg for those of you that don't know. So I'm actually not able to paint furniture just yet, but at least I can do a review video for you guys because you can do that sitting down. So we're gonna use our typical practice board that we always use. I've gone ahead and already opened my can and stirred the paint. I definitely recommend stirring it because you know they sit on the shelves quite a, lot, a while at some of these big box stores. And um, so definitely stir it to make sure you get everything mixed in and the color mixed up really nice. So let's go ahead and put the camera down and I will get started on my okay, first. So like I said, I'm all stirred up and ready to go. I have um, pre-wet my brush. I love using the Klingon brushes, as you guys know. Um, I love to get my brush wet beforehand. It just helps for easier application with the paint. And so here we go, I'm gonna dive right in. Now, I will tell you that that paint consistency is very thin. So I always like to share that on camera to let you guys know what the paint consistency is like. That's important to me when I'm picking a paint um, because I don't want something that's super thick. Um, and so this one, it has a nice consistency. It's very thin once it's all stirred up and mixed together. And um, so let's go ahead and see how easy this application is. Uh, we're using a primed board for this piece. And so far it is going on really nice. I, I am, I'm not sure that I'm gonna buy the one coat application, but you know, hey, let's just see how it turns out after our first coat. Being that we're using a very dark color, on um, a white board, that's a really good sign for us to see how the one coat application is going to stand up because you're covering dark gray with white. If it's not a one coat application, you're gonna see all that white peek through. I'm kind of having a hard time working this on this primed board. Um, it is it easy application? Well, it's not hard, but I do feel like it's got quite a bit of drag for being that I'm using my Klingon brush that's already been pre-moistened with water. I do feel like it is not as smooth going on as some other paints that I've used, but you know what? We're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm gonna stop working it now at this point because I feel like if I continue to work too much, I'm gonna go ahead and get those brush strokes in there and I'm gonna start dragging it. So first coat application, I do feel a tiny bit of drag with the paint. Um, that also could have to do with the fact that it is a very matte chalk paint and sometimes that is how they go on. So let's go ahead and let this set up and we'll come back in about 20, 30 minutes and see how our first right, coat you guys, works. we are back. I have gone ahead and waited the 30 minutes to let this board set up. It does say for dry times that it's 30 minutes to touch, one hour to handle, and two to four hours to recoat. Recoat? Why would we want to recoat? It's a one coat coverage, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a peek at the board and I'll let you guys decide. I've already made my decision and I already kind of had formed an opinion prior to even putting the paint on, but let's take a look at the board. So this is up close. I'm gonna show you guys super duper duper close so you can see. Now, I do not think this is a one coat coverage and I'm gonna show you guys. You can see the, the peek through of the white board up here 
and then in certain areas down here. So in my opinion, it's not a one coat coverage paint. Um, for those of you that may not want that full coverage and you want some of that wood or um, pre-painted surface to peek through, then you could get away with that. For me, this is not even enough. Um, I can see the variation in color from here to here. That's not something I would let go out of my workshop. So we're gonna go ahead and coat this again with a second coat. I knew in the back of my mind that it probably wasn't a one coat coverage. I have yet to find a paint line that does actually, first of all, most of them don't say that, but most of them don't do that. Um, most of these paints are buildable. This is different. Now, one of the other things that I found interesting is nowhere on the can, and actually online, because I researched this, is there any information whether or not you need to top coat this? So I find that very interesting that there's no mention of that. It's a one coat coverage, it says, with easy application, but no mention of a top coat. I would say that the majority of paint lines I would top coat. There are a few out there that say that they have kind of that built-in top coat or um, you know it's a, a all-in-one paint and that's totally fine. So what they're saying is it's durable enough to withstand no top coat. Um, for me personally, selling my pieces and doing pieces for clients, I would never let a piece go out of the shop without a top coat because I obviously wanna make sure that it's got the most durable finish when it's going out the door. So that's just my personal preference. So literally, no top coat. I could find no information whether it's required or not, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the assumption that it's not. Um, the feel of this after one coat I really don't think you need to sand it. I'm actually quite surprised at how smooth it feels. Um, technically, chalky paints have a tendency to feel a little more, they're not rough, but maybe a little bit more gritty. Um, not as maybe super smooth as some different type of paints like mineral paint or a milk paint or something like that. Um, so, you know, the, the texture of it is actually really smooth. I do feel some of the ridges or brush strokes, and, and I think that comes from, um, I did not find that it was a super easy application. Of course it went on nicely, you saw me do it, but I could feel it. And when you've been doing this long enough, you know different paints feel different when they're going on. This one felt a little more like it was dragging as I was laying down my first coat. I had a wet brush and I kind of went on with a liberal amount of paint. Um, I did that because I wanted to see if we could achieve that one coat coverage by going on a little bit heavier um, with the lay down of the paint. That didn't exactly work. So um, let's go ahead and do the second coat just to see. Let's see what it feels like. Let's see what it comes out like. Let's see the up close. Brush strokes are not something I have an issue with ever. Um, in most of my paint, um, everybody asks me, do I brush or do I spray? Well, that's a telltale sign that I'm not getting brush strokes in there. So a lot of that has to do with the paint that you're using, the technique that you have, and then the tools that you are using as well. With this, I don't necessarily see it so much. I feel it. So I'm gonna go ahead just to see what happens. I'm gonna knock this down a little bit with a sanding block and see if that makes a difference and also see if that makes a difference when I lay down that second coat. So let's go ahead and tip the camera down and we'll okay, do that. Yeah. So as you can see, I went ahead and just knocked this down a little bit. It's way smoother feeling. Um, it almost kind of glides right off. Um, I went ahead and just used a 220 grit sanding block, different than sanding paper, way smoother. So I went ahead and did that just to see if that would help our second coat go down a little bit smoother. So let's see what happens. That's not always required, but it is definitely something that you can do. Um, I like to do that because I like my finishes to have that ultra super buttery smooth. And I can tell you right off the bat, this second coat of application, way smoother than that first. So that might be something, if you're gonna go ahead and proceed using this paint, that you might want to make sure that you have on hand a 220 grit sanding block because I can tell you the way that this is going on feels so much smoother. Um, that first coat, I felt like I had a lot of drag. Now I am having to kind of load up my paint quite a bit. 
Um, I'm, I'm starting to feel the drag now because I've worked this a few times, but I can't get the coverage that I'm looking for. So it's not exactly easy application in my opinion. I've used a lot of paints and this one is not the nicest to work with. As you can see, I'm having challenges just showing you guys. So I'm going back over and I've, I can tell I've got to stop doing what I'm doing. But I feel like if I don't, you know, if I do stop, I'm not gonna get the finish that I like. So I'm not so far loving the application process of this. But you know what? I always like to form my opinion at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and let this one set up and we'll come back in another 30 minutes after this is set and we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at everything and we'll do a re- We are back and I've gone ahead and let this second coat set up. It's been about another 30 minutes. And as you saw from that earlier segment, when I was applying that second coat, at first I thought it was gonna go on really smoothly, but after I had knocked it down and sanded it a tad, um, but it, it turns out that I actually had a lot of challenge getting that to lay down nice and smooth. Um, I felt like when I was applying this that my weather was about 95 degrees out. <laughs> so weather will alter the way that your paint workability time is and the, the dry time. And I felt like I had to work really fast. I don't like feeling like I have to work really fast. So that's kind of not a good thing um, in my opinion. So let me go ahead and show you this second coat just so you can see how it went on. So the coverage is really great. Um, I wouldn't complain about the coverage as far as after your second coat, I definitely would not call this a one coat coverage paint like they claim. Maybe um, they put it on super thick and laid it down really heavy. I don't care to paint that way because I feel like there is more risk for it not having a good finish when you're applying too much thick paint at one time trying to get that one coat coverage. So for me, not a one coat coverage paint. That was not my experience. I put two on and two would definitely be for coverage purposes, what I would say this paint requires. So um, there are not all negative things about this. So I don't wanna say that it's a bad paint. I am sure there are a lot of people out there that really like this. Listen, this my review videos is simply my opinion, my experience with the paint. You may have a different experience and a different opinion. Um, I just go off of how I feel, how I see that things are working with the paint, and, and at the end of the video, I like to give you guys a very objective opinion about my experience. So my experience is, you know, to purchase this paint, a, a plus. It is readily available at Home Depot and online, um, Amazon and other places, you can definitely buy it. So as far as availability goes, I would give it an A plus. Um, easy application, mm, you know, I've never really run across a paint that's been a hard application, but I have noted in a lot of my review videos how the paint lays down first coat, how the paint lays down second coat. I felt that there was a bit of a challenge with both coats of paint. Um, I felt like it had a lot of drag. I felt like I had to work quickly and I was really concerned about how the finish was going to come out. So I do have to say the finish is really nice. Um, I did sand in between with that 220 grit sanding block to go ahead and make sure I had a nice smooth finish. So that that is nice. For an ultra matte chalk paint and that is what they are saying this is. There is not a lot of texture to it. It doesn't feel gritty. So it is nice and smooth which I do like. Um, I will tell you if you don't like the ultra matte chalk paint finish, it does mimic the chalk paint finish to a T. There is no sheen on this, as you guys can see. It is flat. So if you like that look, you're gonna like the look of this, the finish. If you do not, then you can always change that by adding a top coat to it. Look, you're not gonna hurt anything by adding a top coat. It says nowhere anything about a top coat. However, in my experience, you can add a top coat to almost any paint and you're not going to damage it. So you'll probably deepen the color a little bit and you're gonna add sheen if you want to. If you do not want to, you are good to go. Once you paint this, no top coat required. So it all depends on, your, on what you like as far as a look. Now, as far as price point goes, it was I think $21.98 for this, which is 30 fluid ounces. It is a large can. I didn't like that they didn't have the smaller sample cans, like a 12 ounce size. Most paint lines do carry at least two sizes. 
So you're committing by buying this large can. Now, it's not that big of a deal. It's $21.98. So price point comparison, the same size of, let's just say, Annie Sloan chalk paint, that's $39.95. So you can see that there's a cost savings. In no way, shape, or form am I comparing it to the Annie Sloan chalk paint. I'm just comparing their size and their price point. So if you are on a budget, this might be a, a chalk paint that you wanna try. $21.98 for that much, that yields 150 square feet you are gonna get a lot of furniture out of that. So let me tell you, I barely scratched the surface of that paint can and I used two practice boards because I did one before this as well. So, you know, you're gonna get a lot for your money. Your coverage is gonna be good, so you're, you're gonna be good with one, two coats, not one, sorry, two coats, um, unless you like that look where you don't have a full solid coverage. So, you know, that coverage wise, I will say two coats, it's got great coverage. So, you know, all in all, would I buy this paint again? No, I wouldn't buy it again. I don't have anything against Rust-Oleum. I am not sponsored or endorsed by either Rust-Oleum or Home Depot, so I'm giving you my honest opinion. I wouldn't. Um, their color selection, in my opinion, is not great. Um, I actually could only find three colors at my Home Depot. I went to two actual Home Depots to look. They had exactly the same colors. White, like a light silvery gray, and charcoal. I have seen it in pink before, they didn't have it at my store, so you may be able to have a better selection if you're online, and maybe you can discover that they've got more colors available. So color selection, not so great. Um, I like to have a variety, at least 20 to 50 colors is awesome. There are so many paint lines out there that do have a ton of um, color selections amongst their paint line. This I would have a challenge with because they don't even have a lot of colors that you could mix and match to achieve different colors. So yeah, that wasn't so great for me. So I would say if you're on a budget, you're just getting started, you want to try out chalk painting, give it a try. I always recommend to try practicing on a very small piece. Grab something around a picture frame if you don't have any type of practice boards. Try it, see what you think, see what you like. Um, you know, it may work for you. Unfortunately for me, it's not a go. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what else to do with this can of paint and, um, you know, just chalk it up to it was for my review video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and the information was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. I will definitely get back to you. Thank you so much for being a subscriber and please pass me along to any of your friends and family that would be interested in these videos. Thank you again and have a good one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.